you know, Nelson Mandela, because of his moral authority, he could actually turn to the student movement and say, okay, that's, that's enough. How does Jacob Zuma do that? How does his cabinet do that? They don't have the moral legs on which to address. You know what I mean? Sure. So you can't solve the political problem. And then you've got to tell people, if despite this concession on the, on the technical front, politically you still decide that you're going to attack people and public property, then we want to be very clear with you. This is what's going to happen. Okay? But you can't only solve this problem with fancy financial models. And this is where I think the Fees Commission report is going to disappoint us. Yeah. Because I don't think there's enough, I suspect, of a political analysis of the problem. You, know, you can put out scenarios till you're blue in the face. And a lot of people in the private sector, as you know, have done that too. Sure. But you also have to solve the political problem is how do you bring uh, under control a renegade group that you don't need a lot. UJ will tell you, you just need 20 really violent people yeah. spreading out across the campus and you could cause havoc. That you've got to contain. And if you can't do that, it doesn't matter what you have on this side. At the same time, you can control the politics. But if you don't make it easier for poor, talented students to access university and succeed, then you also have a problem. So those are the two things, and I don't think we've solved it. In, in Chapter 5, you speak about this leaderless revolution. Uh, and many people thought that it was a group of students very coordinated across all of the institutions no. who were leading the revolution. No. Not the case. No. You've got students from SASCO, from ANCUSD, you've got students from the EFF, you've got PHC, students from all across. And uh, the combinations differed from one campus to the next. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so part of that is understanding the, the genesis, understanding the mindset of, of students. Mm. And, and you've alluded to the fact that there were other factors and other forces in terms mm. of driving some of the violence that came through. Uh, did you see that in, in Free State as well? All the time, all the time. It's very clear to me that some of, the, uh, some of these factions were taking their lead from an instruction from on outside the campus. It was so clear to me. It was so clear to me that within the ruling party there were factions themselves yeah. that stood to benefit from more or less disruption. So you were up against it, you know, um, and people were, you know, the SRC, which used to be the legitimate student body, was completely outflanked sure. by the more violent an unexpected rise of other factions. So you were on hiding to nothing, but how you managed it, you know, I mean, the, the, the TUT's combination of students uh, and activists, and particularly the violent ones, completely different from what you saw at BITS, for example. So not knowing, you know, who you were talking to, <laughs> as the UWC vice chancellor said, was part of the problem. You could solve a problem by all night negotiations the next morning, a different group comes up and says, no, we're the real students. <laughs>